mind when you watch like Grey's Anatomy or you watch Casualty and all these shows that make being a doctor look so exciting and you're saving lives all the time but mm -hmm. the reality but right now there's like a worldwide shortage of vets uh, we they don't, don't pay for it the no. that is crazy no. and Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. May and I'm a vet that recently graduated from Cambridge. And I'm Dr. Kemi, I'm a doctor and I have been graduating for two years. Today we're gonna to discuss salaries, regrets and the things that we wish we knew before we started veterinary medicine and regular medicine. So the first question is, why did you want to be a vet and why did you want to be a doctor? Okay, so I wanted to be a doctor because I went to a school where everybody was applying for medicine. It was one of these um, kind of environments where medicine was just held in such a high regard. Everybody wanted to do it, everyone like applied for it. So for me, I think probably, <laughs> it's probably not the best reason why someone should go into medicine. But for me, I felt like a lot of pressure from my environment and that's kind of what pushed me into this career. Mm -hmm. And did you have like regrets because of that or? Well, I think like if you are going to do something like medicine, you have to have that initial love and drive for it. Mm -hmm. And it's something that at the time, I think when I saw all my friends applying for it, I thought that I had that same love and drive. Mm -hmm. But I think it's over time you'll realize actually like my motives to going into this might have not have been the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we'll go into more like regrets and stuff we wish we knew later in this video. So for me, I grew up taking care of stray cats in like my backyard back home. And that sort of exposed me to a little bit of shelter medicine and made me realize that actually I really like I really like animals and then it wasn't until I was 17 or 18 years old that I did work experience at a vet clinic and the zoo and then I realized that actually maybe I do want to have a working environment with animals. I did have pressures from my relatives who said like why do you want to do veterinary medicine when you can do human medicine because you're saving human lives. And to me, I felt that a lot of people were already becoming human doctors and like, and I didn't know many vets personally, so I thought that there were less vets in this world. So I was like, <laughs> we need more people to save animals. So I embarked on this journey. But then I realized actually, you're not only working with animals, but also humans when I was in vet school. Mm. But yeah, more onto that later. That's like a much better <laughs> like reason for doing something <laughs> than, than my reason. <laughs> so salaries for vets and doctors. Okay, so we're both very open about money and the thing is lots of like doctors and just people in general that don't get open about money and so you don't have these like open conversations but actually as a junior doctor you're not earning much money at all and for like the long hours and the weekends and everything it, it does like take its toll especially if you live in London. Mm. Um, so everyone starts off at like a basic salary so I think in year one it's like £27,000 but then you add on, when you add on like nights and weekends and everything and and like London allowance if you live in London it will come to about £36,000 in your first year and then like £44,000 before tax in your first year mm -hmm. so that's not that much if you live in London like rent in London is like £800 a month mm -hmm. um, so it does basically it takes a while for you to get to the levels that the salary points that will give you the life that you want to live and that flexibility mm -hmm. and I think um, another thing about doctors is that you know you're not even allowed to say the word money because people really? Yeah, like in the medical profession, people, you know, you're meant to be here helping people and yeah, to yeah, like yeah. say that you want a bit of extra money. It's not really held in the best regard. But I think if you can have like a side hustle or a YouTube channel during uh, your medical careers, career, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it won't, it will be a benefit to you basically. Mm -hmm. So for vets, the average new graduate salary ranges from £29,000 to £31,000 or even up to £33,000 now um, before tax and I'm under a graduate scheme so it's £29,000 uh, for the first two years and they also give you like an added bonus of £2,500 um, in the first year and also in the second year and if you consider the grand scheme of things of doing six years at vet school or five years at medical yeah. school and coming out with this pay I wouldn't say it's super amazing but I think it's I guess livable if you don't live in um, London, London yeah. and places like that there's um, a lot of doctors who you know still live with their parents and mm -hmm. there's lots of like it's just you wouldn't assume that you would have worked this hard and then not be able to like have your own apartment and stuff mm -hmm. but that is the reality I think for like a, a lot, lot of, of doctors yeah mm. 
and I guess for us the salary inc increment is not going to be very high as well so if you're a general practice vet you start off like I said 29-30,000 pounds a, a year and then I think if, if you're a senior vet you can get up to maybe 40 or 50,000 pounds I think it caps around that but it, it depends on different practices and it depends if you become a partner and own a practice, of course, then you probably earn more if you own a practice. Yeah. But then these days, the trend is more corporates are buying up practices, so vets don't really get the chance to be a partner. Whether or not that's a good or bad thing, there's like loads of pros and cons, but like yeah. this video is not about that. This video is about just like brief snapshot of like salaries. But yeah. That's so interesting, I think, because especially like the, the perception is that vets are earning a lot of money because it's all private and, you know, people spend a lot of money to get their dog's yeah. surgery and stuff. So I'm surprised that it would cap at like um, 50. Yeah. Whereas for doctors, it, the increments, it does go up quite well every year. So by the time you're a consultant, you're on like... Um, like 80,000 to 100,000 and then there's lots of private potential as well so there is potential to be earning like um, like really really a lot of money mm -hmm. if you go into private plastic surgery private dermatology or something like that mm. okay cool okay next question so what did you wish you knew or any regrets now that you've been in the medical profession yeah okay <laughs> definitely i mean as i said i think your reasonings to go into a career like medicine have to be really strong because you don't actually realize like all of the sacrifices that you have to make along the way so what i wish i knew was what i'd be doing on a day-to-day -day basis every single day so in my mind when you watch like Grey's Anatomy or you watch Casualty and all these shows that make being a doctor look so exciting and you're saving lives all the time you've got like this picture of your head and this pedestal of what the job is going to be like but mm -hmm. the reality is like the medicine is like this much of your job and everything else takes up your whole day so all of the admin that you have to do you're sat at a desk for such a long period of really? the day yeah wow. and so you do a ward round you do your admin jobs you do all these little things that aren't actually like practicing medicine mm -hmm. so the medicine is amazing it's great it's so interesting to learn about diagnoses and mm -hmm. symptoms and management plans but that makes up a really small part of your day and you do so many long hours it's not like always a happy workplace as you can imagine people are very yeah, sick it's stress. a very high intensity mm -hmm. job you have to do your admin tasks quickly or people won't get discharged yeah so I wish I knew that it wasn't this kind of Grey's Anatomy picture in mm -hmm. my head. Yeah. That it was like a real kind of hard job. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to mention was that um, as a junior doctor, like you do a lot of rotations. Mm -hmm. So kind of the pathway from qualifying for medical school to becoming a consultant, which is the highest grade mm -hmm. in your specialty, is foundation training, which is two years, core training, which is three years, and specialty training, which can be five years basically you have to do so many steps between before you get to the end yeah and in between you're doing lots of rotations you're moving around you never get to stay put in one mm, place or yeah. one hospital mm -hmm. and that's something i didn't have any understanding of it's been really hard and do you get to choose where you rotate to or do they just allocate you so it's a bit of both so you can put down your preferences but for example if you want to stay in london like i do basically everybody wants to stay in london mm. everyone wants to be in birmingham or even cambridge like the big cities yeah whereas nobody wants to be like you know in the outer hebrides or yeah, like yeah, the yeah. isle of Wight, or like just places that are very small or rural yeah. unless you come from there mm -hmm. and so obviously everyone can't be in London and they have to be some people on the Isle of Wight so if you don't do very well in your rankings okay. each time you're ranked they mm -hmm. put you yeah you're ranked at every stage wow. of your of your career <laughs> that's crazy so we don't have like a ranking system for vets mm -hmm. because we don't have an NHS so oh, yeah. how we find our jobs is we apply to the jobs that we want mm -hmm. um, be it a farm vet or a small animal vet and then and then like a no like a normal interview process i guess yeah. yeah so is there a chance you might not get a job then um so oh in your specific practice that you want yeah, yeah maybe if there's loads of people who want that specific clinic and you have a lot of competition then you might not get that job yeah. but right now there's like a worldwide shortage of vets oh. that everyone is leaving not everyone a lot of people are leaving the profession because of a lot of issues like compassion fatigue uh. and long hours and the pay increment isn't that much so people are leaving the profession so if you're a new graduate vet i think there will definitely be jobs for you there there are a lot of places trying to hire people 
So don't worry if you are worried about jobs. So regrets now that I've done vet school. So I haven't started as a vet until next month. So I won't be able to like talk much about thank you. <laughs> talk much about the job yet, but I will stay tuned for that video. So <laughs> vet school, I wish I knew that I would have to do a lot of placements during my holidays so I wouldn't mm -hmm. have time to like you know take summer jobs to make some money during holidays or mm -hmm. like see my family very often and when you're doing those placements you are not paid and you have to fork out some money for like transport costs and also staying costs accommodation oh, yeah we don't, don't get pay paid for it the no. that is crazy no. and the Cambridge is the only vet school that I know that provides an allowance of like they gave us 15 pounds a day for like staying away like living outside of your home address and 10 pounds i think if you're living in your home address um so that's like really really good that they can do that and we, we can also claim our travel expenses up to 300 pounds i think um at cambridge but i don't oh think other gosh. universities have that so yeah it is it it's is a bit harsh us. Yeah. It's very harsh. <laughs> but they do have, the BVA have travel grants, but obviously not everybody will get it because it's only like a fixed number of travel grants, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that cost and also exams. When it came to exams, I realized I had to use a totally different study technique compared to A-levels because it's such a different course. In A-levels, you have like a fixed syllabus, whereas in yeah. uni, you have to learn, oh, in uni, you have to learn everything, uh, not everything, but you have to learn the main principles and then there's like, basically it's endless. And you got to yeah. prioritize what's important in your knowledge, what mm. you need to know in your syllabus, and also be comfortable with writing essays, which is, I think, a bit of a Cambridge thing to write essays, maybe. Do you know what type of animals that you want to work with? Oh, um... I, so I'm going to be a small animal vet, so I'll work with cats and dogs and probably rabbits as well because they're becoming a more popular pet and maybe some exotics if they come into the clinic. And like, so exotics is like, um, it can range from small furries, for example, rabbits, gerbils, hamsters, chinchillas, ferrets, and also reptiles. And also wildlife animals like in zoos, they, they also count as exotic animals. Because um, yeah. rabbits don't sound very exotic. No, they don't sound very exotic. <laughs> you wouldn't think they count as an exotic animal, but yeah, they are. Um, and also on the topic of career progression, so you told us about to become a dermatologist, mm -hmm. which is like something that you want to yeah interested in. You have to do your foundation stuff. Uh, foundation, core, and then specialise in dermatology. It's like 10, 10 more years. So in total from graduation, um, that's like about eight years. Oh, eight years. Yeah. What about being a general practice doctor? That's just like three years. So once you've done your, um, you've done your medical school, you've done your foundation training. So in total, five years from medical school. Five years from medical school. From so medical like school. ten years yeah. from day one of medical yeah, school. Yeah, ten years from day one. Okay. So as a vet, you can be a GP vet from, like, from day one after graduating from vet school. So I think it's different. We don't mm. have a structure like foundation one and foundation two. What we have is um, different structures depending if you're in a corporate practice or an independent. So corporate practice means you're owned by a corporate like CVS, IVC, and independent means you're just an independent. At independent, I think the structure varies from clinic to clinic, where you start as a vet essentially at day one, and then obviously you get support from the senior vets during your surgeries, and you can get second opinions from them, and slowly guide you into being like a more confident vet. In corporate uh, practices, they have a grad scheme and after those two years, if you want to get a certificate, so people tend to do a cert AVP and then that's when you can special, not specialize, but like sort of have more knowledge in surgery, like get a certificate in um, radiology, imaging, for example. Um, and this is different from being a resident, a specialist, like a mm. European board specialist. That one you have to do two internships, so one rotating internship, one specialist internship, and then four years at a residency at a university. So it's also quite a long process, I guess, yeah. to get to like, if you want to be a soft tissue surgeon, for example, you need to do essentially two years out, get experience, two years in internships, and then four years at a residency. So that, that's the general. Yeah, so it's a, it sounds quite a long process as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, so. but unless if you're a GP vet, you can start day one day after one. vet yeah. school. That so is yeah. crazy, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So some advice for people trying to decide between veterinary medicine and human medicine. I'd say that you should do experience.